o'clock. So we um, are going to call begin um, the meeting of the local historic district commission. Um, it's a continued public hearing um, on the uh, Amherst Media's application for the property at um, 14. B-251 and 14B-250 on um, Gray and Main Street. Uh, we don't have any other new applications or new business before the commission today. So um, again, this is uh, considered a continuation um, of the prior uh, meetings. And uh, we will uh, go until 6 o'clock um, is when we will um, adjourn the meeting. So and I. Um, do want to make the statement just um, that uh, one of our members, um, I think it's called the the Mullins. Mullins rule. Mullins we, we rule. Don't have a, we haven't adopted it. But it um, that um, Greta uh, Wilcox was um, was uh, you know had to uh, miss two meetings, which happens to all of us, you know, from time to time. And the rule is that if you um, are if absent two meetings on the same application, that you can continue to deliberate with the commission and ask questions and be part of all the discussions. But unfortunately, she would have to recuse herself from voting on this application. So I just want to let everyone should be sorry. Yeah, aware of that. Um, OK, so I think we will proceed as we uh, usually do with um, the applicant uh, making a presentation on new information that they have for the commission. And will you so I would like to open oh, up Oh, oh, sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to 2020. <laughs> a new year for all of us, hopefully a good year. Uh, dear members of the local historic district commission, I am not a lawyer, nor an architect. I am the person responsible for the successful transition of the 44-year-old independent nonprofit media center known as Amherst Media. My name is Jim Lesko. I'm the executive director. The transition is from our current facility at 246 College Street, our home base for the past 39 years, to a new facility to be built upon the land we purchased in 2013 at Bain Gray Street. To prepare myself for this arduous task, I read as much as I could about the Dickinson Historic District and the bylaws that help define your responsibilities and guidelines. The intention behind the bylaws are well defined, but leaves room for interpretation and judgment for those on the commission to decide the meaning of such words as appropriate. While others may see the collaborative work that has been generated between the Commission and Amherst Media as being counterproductive and out of line with the roles and responsibility of the Commission, we do not. We have embraced the process while trying to reach a collective understanding and vision as to what actually meets the intent of the bylaw. It has not always been easy or without disagreements. This process is to help the historic district make the best decision it can, one that reflects the intent of the bylaws and certify or deny appropriateness. As the applicant for this certificate, the certification, we believe we have submitted a concept design that has incorporated many of the commission's requests and suggestions. We believe it is an appropriate and reflects the residential as well as the commercial elements within the immediate community. I will now introduce, reintroduce Bill Gillen to present those designs to you. Thank you. Mr. Thank Stoke, you. Can I have a question? Yes. Uh, you had mentioned in the submission you sent uh, that you had a spreadsheet yep. with all kinds of detail about all the things. Yep. Uh, I've not seen that spreadsheet. I have not submitted it to you yet. It's not completed until upon the, the, the liberations are completed and here. I see. You would suggest that, that it existed. It does that? exist, yeah. I said I've been working on it to have that prepared. It's existed. It's existed for nothing. No, I, I don't believe I ever stated that I would be submitting that to you. Sorry. That's okay. Is that a spreadsheet of all the items that? And time and dates of when we, we came before you, what was suggested, things that we did oh, to alter. Okay, so right. it's a way to flow, and it was felt that it would be very helpful for us and for you to show the amount of work that went into right. uh, the deliberation, that this was not by and any how means. How you responded, how yeah. the applicant responded to and, the, and the to request. Well, yes. Okay. So it's a big job. It's a huge job. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm Bill Gillen. I'm the architect. And John Strick is with me. And Clay Richard. Clay is a, uh, an undergraduate at UMass and wants to be an architect. And uh, he was referred to me by the head of the architectural department as someone who could help us out if he could do this uh, using the Rhino program, which we don't have. So what 
what I want to do, like to do, what we'll do, would be to have Clay quickly review a couple of the, uh, the, the views that you saw last week so that we can show you our proposed elevations you can see how they relate or don't relate to what you saw last time. Uh, we'll also be showing you a revised plan. You probably have it there, uh, showing how we uh, have modified the plan a little bit. And then lastly, we'll show you the elevations that you can see from the public way. Uh, we also have with us details, and we have a, a square footage graphic that was requested by Nate showing the uh, relationship of our property building to the neighbors and uh, other buildings in the community. So, go ahead, Nate. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sorry. Clay. Clay. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Clay, as Bill said, I'm an undergraduate in the architecture program. And um, this is pretty much just a massive model of the current scheme of the proposed Amherst Media Center with uh, the immediate neighborhood and surroundings um, kind of buildings. So we have a few different um, options for seeing it kind of from all different angles. Could, could I ask, this is what you're proposing now? Or is this so, again yeah. something before you revised it again? It's the same as last It's the week. same, okay, that's it, okay. Sorry. Yes, this is, yeah, this is the same exact model. That Just we saw when we week. show you the new elevations, you probably will say, well, what did it look like, or what was I thinking? I said, okay, I got So it. just to refresh you. Okay, okay. okay. This is all all is so none of this has changed. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah, this is all the same as you saw last meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, just a refresher. It's the same footing. Okay. Okay. That's in the corner, yeah. like, from Gray okay. Street, um, from Main Street, looking down Gray Street. Mm -hmm. Seeing those, like, pitch roofs matching yeah. the existing pitch roofs on yeah. Gray Street. Throughout um, the remainder of the meeting, if anyone wants to see this kind of model from a certain spot. Um, yes, could you show the north elevation, please? The north elevation. That is a, that is a different model, by the way. I it's different from what I'm looking at here. The, from, from those this. are the new elevations. Yeah, you, you, the, the, the model that we're looking at up there has got a dip there, and, and these don't. I mean, I like these better, but uh, uh -huh. it's different. It's not a lot this, different. <coughs> what we're showing on, what we're going to show you is the proposed elevations, which followed that, and naturally right, things right, will okay. modify yeah. a little okay. bit, but so that's the exact same presentation we showed last time. Last last time. I'm sorry, this is the south. No, north. this is the north. The north. This, this is, is where the parking, the parking lot is. Lot, right. yes, okay. the parking lot. Is that what you were hoping to see? The, without the houses and stuff? Not the way it is. Yes, I right. wanted to see the parking lot area. So this is this is where the parking lot area would be. Mm -hmm. And then you enter in that. Okay. You, can you show the uh, floor plan? Do you have that handy? Um, the floor plan? Um, the new, new floor plan. <coughs> I don't believe I have the new floor plan yet. I think we have, John has it in his pocket. Okay. Nate, did you put any of these in? I printed them. I have it all on the too. That's good. You want to show it, Nate? Yeah. <coughs> We haven't done a, a, a rendered north elevation. We did the Gray Street and Main Street and Triangle Street focused on that. Sure. I was just trying at the beginning to put together a list of asks for our next meeting so that we don't miss anything. The sort of thing you're talking about, except mm -hmm. from the other point of view. That is, the things we're going to need. Gotcha.
1620 plan. Right that one, yeah. So uh, at our last last meeting, it was there was concern about uh, oh, the slope plan. There it is. Yeah. Thank you. We have the studio over here, and we were discussing, because Marianne man mentioned it's not going to have any windows on Gray Street. So we said, oh, well, that's, we should have thought of that. We're, and we've simply flipped that around. So we put the studio over here, same roof and everything, and we put things over here that can use windows. So it's much better, uh, wise. So there's the main entrance, and here's the entrance from the north. Uh -oh. Excuse me, could I ask another question? Mm -hmm. And that is, um, there had been, yeah, no. Oops. there had been a considerably earlier version where you had a very elegant uh, entrance to the main entrance on uh, mm -hmm. from Main Street, and I don't know whether that just doesn't show up in those drawings. Or whether that somehow disappeared? Probably somehow forgotten about and disappeared, in part because we're focusing on getting an overall approval of the elevations, the location of the site, and the proximate elevations, which we've shown you. Yeah. We, we can always do that. That's sort of like a detail for our next review, which I hope would be when we've finished our engineering and we'll come back or when we're 90 percent done about ready to go for a permit and at that point we can show you these or develop that if we think we want to show that if we want to do that i'm not I, sure i don't know um how the commission feels about yeah, we'll this. discuss this yeah we'll discuss this because it may be see that's that popping we, out and, what, and this I, I, is not popping out I, I, right yes we know that and um we'll have to have this that's discussion right. because i think we have different requirements and a different time frame from what the planning board would be. So that coming back to us with something that appears to you to be a detail, but that appears to some of us to perhaps be a deal breaker, is not a very wise idea. I mean, the, the, yeah, we can, we, we are not, we can't issue a certificate of appropriateness. I mean, we wouldn't. Not that we would deny it, we just can't issue it until you know those de you know those details are. I mean, those aren't minor details. Yes, it's going to look like. Yeah, yeah we will. And what you're, I hope where you're going is that we would then continue working on this, knowing that it's not going to be thrown out. Right. Exactly. And, and, and exactly. we can come back and revise it. Fine. No problem. Well, you mean? <coughs> but but, but we, we would we not have issued a certificate, certificate of appropriateness. All we need is a certificate of enthusiasm that we do have, you encourage <laughs> us to of carry yes, on. We can, we and we support. love to carry it on. Right. And we love we, to talk but about but the we, we would love to come as close, you know, maybe by the end of this month, as close to what, as many details as you can give us. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we can issue the certificate. Mm -hmm. But continue. But we'd still be coming. I, I suggest you would still, still be coming back, back because you would later have, you may change done. things. But, but, yeah. So uh, getting back to the plan, um, we put the studio over here so we could get windows all around here. Uh, we have a very nice uh, glass section over here looking out over the meadow. Uh, the, the plan is laid out so that you can look right through the whole building from one end to the other. So this is glass, this is glass, the glass door is here. And you can look through going this way and there are no ramps involved anywhere. The grade is worked out. So you come in here, you go up a hair so the water doesn't go around and come in. And similarly here, you go down a bit and you're uh, on, on the same level. <coughs> well, we have a, a stone wall up here, which we would just extend right back. And uh, we would put a low stone wall over here, oh, this high, separating the, the grass uh, and the planting area from the parking lot, and that would return around like that and die into the grade. This is a handicapped parking spot and there are eight uh, 
total of parking. We need to get that approved by the planning board that they'll, they'll go along with eight mm -hmm. instead of right. We, we can recommend that, yeah. Right. Well, let's look at the site plan. Here's the site plan. Uh, the, uh, we were talking about putting some uh, hedge here. We think of it as a naturalized uh, evergreen. Uh, could be holly, uh, could be boxwood, could be evergreen. And uh, over here, this big X is like, that's where the uh, infiltration or the drainage bed is, but it's not uh, anything you'll see as we showed you last time. It, it doesn't project. Excuse me, where is the berm? There is no berm. I thought the... Oh, it, it's a berm. We demonstrated that last week. It, uh, I think it's, he still has it. You can see it with and without the berm. It's this much. But I'm wondering where it is. Oh, it's, it's here. It's where the square it, is. It's, it's where the it. square is. It's the square. It, is, oh, okay, it just blends in. I see. Thank you. Okay. You'll never notice. Yes. I don't know what else. So the, there's just a question. So from Main Street, it's just a slope walkway up to the entryway. So there's no, it's not considered a ramp. It's just a, from Main Street to the entrance, it's just a walkway. There's no ramp. Right, it's not a ramp. No, there's no ramps. It's just, naturally, it's got a pitch to it, but right. we don't want to invite water from here from running into the building, which is. And is the setback still, it's 20 feet? Um, on Main Street? Maybe John knows. On the east side or the west side of the building? On the south side. Yeah, southeast or southwest? Oh, at the point that it's closest to, to Main Street. Here? Yeah. Oh, so that, from that varies from 10 foot 4 to 12 foot 7 to the edge of the grass. <clears throat> and there's a sidewalk, and then there's a median strip, and then there's a street. So what's the uh, setback on the property line again? On the property line, it's uh, 12 foot 7. 12 foot 7. Here? No, on the other end. It's 10 foot 4 on that end. So 10 foot from the sidewalk? 10 foot from the, from the, from the property line. The property line is set back some from the yeah. sidewalk. Point out, Bill, point out the width of the sidewalk. Let me just get up here for a second. This is the dimensions I was giving you, right to here. That's the sidewalk. And to here. Now right. the sidewalk travels further in both cases, and there's also a median strip here. So you can, I can say it's 12 foot 7 from here to here, but then it's probably another 8 yeah. or 10 okay. feet okay. to okay. the asphalt. Okay. So, I guess we can go to the elevations. Yes. No other questions right here? Okay. Main, main Street elevation, the main entrance with or without Greek columns, Roman columns. Uh, this is a, uh, well, these are the, I forget what, what the plan is, but these are glazed areas, uh, which would uh, be kind of fun to have some places that are relatively enclosed offices and others which are like the glass office. Is this, is this roof line one flat thing that extends further? This is one flat. Piece that starts yeah. from here and goes straight up, and then it starts from here and goes up. But it's the same yeah. roof line, so the same. But you'll see it when we turn okay. and look this way. Okay. Is it interrupted at all? Is it designed at all? It's not interrupted. It, there's, a, there's a wing going out and a wing coming this way. We'll, we'll show you on the I other ele yeah. the other two elevations. Uh, interrupted by a single these elements. Elements. Yeah, the, uh, Do you think that would be wood? What would yeah, what material? Shingles? Shingles or asphalt? Asphalt shingles. Asphalt shingles. Okay. Gray. Is there any area for solar collectors? It's a perfect solar collector 
roof, but it, out of my purview and yeah, yeah. yours too. No, I just had a question about the glazing. So is that all going to be clear glazing? Or, yes. But because, you know, um, although the commission looks at what's visible from the public way, I mean, if there are things on the inside of the, that glazing, it's so big that I mean, that's under their jurisdiction too. For instance, if you're, doing a, if you're going to end up having blackout on some of the windows or, you know, a sign, for instance, that's going to be out, viewed out from outside, that's under the jurisdiction of the commission too. So I just want to make sure that it's not. That's either. not intended. There would be drapes, I'm sure. Okay. I just want to make sure that there isn't any. No, we're not selling something. Right, like with no paint or you know, like a mural. Bar is open, no. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have the, another elevation? Yes. Surprise me. Uh, let's see. This is the one that you see from Triangle Street. And again, that glass was round. We, we're kind of making a play uh, yes. of uh, yes. this kind of glass and punctured yes. windows. Here's the, uh, the roof of this section, and it uh, has a little roof overhang here, but that's where the machinery will be. And here's the height of the stone wall. This is maybe the height of the evergreen shrubs. Wait, Here's that's the, the height? Now, could the shrubs be, this is my pet peeve, could be any higher height. to, just to shield the cars? But that's the only purpose we right. put them there. Yeah. yeah. Just tie enough We're not going to tell them to stop growing. Right. The cars are right there. On the other side. The other side of it, yeah. yeah. But they're, uh, the ground is sloping down. Oh, oh okay. Right. So right. you only, uh, you have a question, Bruce? Yeah. So what, is, what, what material are you proposing or you imagine proposing for the, uh, Infill of the pediment area there, that triangular flat space. And here and here? No, in, in that triangle there. there yeah. And, and beyond. And, and here too. Uh, what, smooth, what's the latest? Smooth stucco or smooth uh, boards, <coughs> not unlike the end of the Emily Dickinson house. Good. Yeah, we want to change the texture now. So it could, be, it could be stucco. It could be smooth, it'll be, be solid boards. one color. Mm -hmm. Solid and, board. Uh, there might be a little feature yeah. molding. It's an inch and a half piece that goes up yeah. where you see that line there. Fastened with number 10 finishing nails and right. galvanized that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see, can we have another one? And here's the view from Gray Street. There's a little bit of a of the grass coming down, but the, this is the gray. There's a stone, stone wall here and here. And uh, down behind this is the, uh, the studio. And this, you can see all the way through to the other side where you saw glass. So I thought that was a, an important feature. I also made the corridor six feet wide so that two people can walk across down the car. Because I thought Nate, Nate might be telling me it's got too much wasted space inside. But I thought people should walk on and on down it. <laughs> <laughs> down the corridor. So, there's visible activity that would be seen. Yeah. 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 It's an That's institution, true. it's right. an ongoing programmatic space. So you'll be showing us at a later time the design of the door from the driveway? Oh yeah, they'll be on the yeah. the drawings that we will be presenting shortly to the planning board. We'll, yeah. I just wanted to get this by you yes. yeah. and on the way and, and, and go back to the Main Street one. I mean, yeah, the Main Street elevation. You might say, well, can we do more study on this? Oh, I'll be happy to, to do that. It, yes, because we had said before that we liked the staggered effect mm -hmm. of the um, western side pushed back to a certain extent, and then there was a nice walkway up to the entrance as well as a stairwell into the entrance. So it rather made a rather elegant facade from Main Street, which that facade, I think, had been a concern on our part. And so I was sorry when I, when it seemed that it was here yesterday and gone today. Yeah, we worked to uh, get rid of the stairs because no one wants them, really. Okay, I understand. And, uh, but you do have the walkway. And it goes straight in, which isn't all that elegant, but yeah. it yeah. goes straight in. It's a, it's but a we have room here to plant, right? that's for sure. And well, it's a better solution for yeah. creating an entry in there. You can control the snow. Yeah, no. The previous was over in the corner, and yeah. we had to do that there, to keep them from being killed by the avalanche. So this is better yeah. from broader considerations. Okay. Good. I think. 
I don't think I have, we have uh, details. Maybe you could just flash, flash on that. I don't expect you to. One, two, three. These been, this is the thought has been put into it and how we're going to do it, but that is stuff that's, that, that's the basis for the working drawings that we'll be working on. But this is the kind of, this has all the information, you know, as your question, smooth stucco, corner board, 12 inch corner board <coughs> trim. It's all there, but it, it, it'd be, if it's incorporated in the working drawings, it'll be more understandable. <coughs> Maybe the other. Yeah. And the next. Now, there's a certain deceit to that 3D drawing you held up. Yes. It's it's much more representational. Yes. These are sketches, but yes. the same elements yes. you see in that drawing, pilasters. The skirt yes. boards, the trim, are all meant to be in these details. We haven't changed anything. Yes. We just haven't redid another pretty drawing like that, or yes. prettier than these. It, it wasn't so much that it was pretty. It was it was it was the staggering and the uh, and the uh, the entrance that was in more detail. That that was my only. Well, that became one long building. We we've, we've broken up the volumes. Yes, I know. And so, that right. indeed helps yes. to disguise. You know, or to help the the sitting on the site. Mm -hmm. Did you want to uh, talk about the size of the building, Nate? Is that why you asked me to come up with that list? Well, I think you know the commission had asked for you know what's the footprint, you know what's the relative size compared to the surroundings. It's you know, part of the criteria to know if it's appropriate. So that you know, if you want to speak to that, you know, what you know, because there's a you know, we we did we did a graphic. Thank you. A quick graphic which shows in the yellow boxes the gross square feet of each building of the neighbors, right off of the tax cards. Tax cards. I was asked to do gross square footage. Oh, that's, that's what. Okay. That's a column. Yeah, they yeah. Have. Yeah. And so uh, we're neither the largest nor the smallest uh, building. The ones that are blackened in are the buildings I calculated or uh, tabulated here for you. So it, it demonstrates that we're uh, in the middle of the pack, not a huge building, not a small building for the site. You're at the 70? Emily Dickinson is considerably larger, and of course the mansions are almost double. But it's in the in, the, in my in the, on the front drive. If you, one of the files is the draft. So you're at. Uh, is, 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 that's it. Yeah. That's it. So you're seventy one. Seventy one with an asterisk, so you know that's yeah, the so one. Yeah. So the image shows both in you know the black what the footprint looks like. So you get a you get a sense for what the yes. what the footprint of the building looks like, and then the number so is the gross square feet yes. of the building. So right. The building next door. Next auto is the 7666, mm -hmm. and we're 7,100. And then the one across the street is 5,000. Yeah. Emily Dickinson is 9,500. This building is 10,000. Billy, the gross means that you've got um, about uh, 2,800 or something of, uh, you're counting about 2,800 square feet of attic, of attic, attic. space. That's yeah. because this is gross, and these are all gross okay. numbers. Right, and this is not the complete attic. It's six foot high and higher. Yeah. Not the part that was down, well, but the, a, uh, they don't count that. That's an accurate. Yeah. You, do, you have, do you have the size of the women's center? <laughs> they didn't have it. I, I filled it in, but I couldn't find it. Okay. I don't think they pay taxes or something. I, oh, that's <laughs> it, of course. Well, they, they, they yeah. I don't want to embarrass them. I don't, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taxes. sure it's legal. Well, it's it's probably similar to the um, Hills. Yeah, Hills house yes. next door. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so this is gross square feet that you know would be you know all floor levels mm -hmm. and everything else. So just to give a sense for the volume of the building, and then you see the footprint in, in you know, the block. So is the footprint? I mean, we I thought it was 
4,000. 4,000, so that's, yeah. yes, okay. Because when you, um, I think the Hills House is also like 30, you know, it's close to 4,000, yeah, but it it's not, like, but the 10,000 is. I didn't, I can't calculate it, right. but I see. Okay. It, see, it doesn't tabulate that on the, uh, the session's maps. Yeah, but okay, this is very helpful. Mm -hmm. The property Footprint. card, you can find all that on the property record card. Well, that wasn't asked for, that was asked to do the gross square footage. Yeah. That's what we did. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. so this is, uh, yeah. We, we, uh, we'd love to carry on and get into the job, really do the uh, final drafting and uh, have the engineers lay out the structural areas. That's the, the best part of the job to come and we're eager to get on it, but we didn't want to get too far along. We didn't go on get along in at all in case this wasn't acceptable and so far. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I wonder, is there an ongoing relation with Great Country t Timber Frames on this project? I don't know. Not at this moment. There's not a disconnection and there's not a connection, meaning it's in limbo at the moment. Oh, well, um, because my question is that they, of course, are a modular group. Is that correct? I mean, they do modular. They, they, they cut to design. They design yes, and yes. cut to the speci specifications of the project. So. Um, the reason I asked is, of course, we've been dealing with Mr. Gillen with all of the details of all of this, and if Great Country Timber Frames was going to be involved at all, it would no, be they're helpful. No, they're, they're working for me. They yeah, working. They would be a general uh, contractor. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Don't mess with me. I just it's a good question for clarification, but yes. no, there is yeah. no okay. direct link at the moment. They could bid on it to be general contractor. No, we're just saying that you would show, like, windows and everything, if, and they'll, if they they'll came, they would it. come with you. Right. right. We have to approve it. Right. Good. Here. Okay. Um, so, I guess my question is, I guess to sort of see if we're all on the same wavelength, <laughs> that um, you you were hoping by, by the end of this by this meeting that we would be able to say we're comfortable with what you presented. And well. with that, and then, so I guess this is also my question. If then you go to the planning board, does that leave the application open? Yeah. So, Bill, my so my you know my concern really is that if the commission isn't comfortable making a decision based on the information presented in terms of detail, you say things could change, and you want to go through the planning board process and then come back, that means we have to the commission needs to leave the hearing open for potentially months, I mean, maybe even until May. Mm -hmm. um, because um, you know the planning board process may not be done until then, and so I don't, you know, I don't think that's the right process because um, you know if someone misses a meeting, that means the board has to be here and information has to be continued, and so essentially we've kept the same application going for almost a year, um, and so you know an applicant can withdraw without prejudice before there's a decision made by the board. And you can always submit an application again. And so it's not negating what's been done to this part up until this time. You know, there's already been some consensus that the commission likes the massing, a lot of the design, but it allows you to go to the planning board and move forward. And if there's any big changes, you'd have to come back anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so and but I don't want to come back. send something to the planning board saying that, I mean, we, if we yeah. decide that we, you know, or in consensus, we have a vote, whatever, that we right. sent a, a memo to the planning board saying that we are in support of this, you know, what oh, they have presented so, so far, right. and we request the parking be limited. Right, I think, right, I think that would be helpful for the planning board if the commission, you know, has agreed that they like the massing, the siting of the building, the proportions, then, you know, explaining that to the planning board would be helpful in their review because, you know, they're going to have. Um, you know, they might ask for the commission to make comments, but they'll have, you know, they might have all separate set of opinions. You know, they have their parking requirements, which has been reduced. So we'd want to explain that. Yeah, we would go that, in person and. Right, yeah. but that's mm -hmm. the reason why it's been reduced is we requested it to have it be an, an appropriate design for the local historic district. Um, you know, it, it's really up to the commission in terms of how comfortable the members are, if they think there's enough information, and what's the time frame. So, I mean, you're saying you'd. Have working drawings, but you know, is it really after the planning board? And that could, like I said, be months. 
or is it you know by the end you know is it by the end of this month that <coughs> no. the opening drawings are? No, it'll take us two or three months yeah. because planning board is only final final preliminaries. Well, this is the other question: What if it's open, but they have nothing to come back to us to until May? Then we wouldn't keep meeting about it. Well, no, but I mean we'd have to continue it to a date certain. Date certain. It's just. Oh, we have to continue. So we could pick a date in June, for example. We could. Or, or a just, date in April and then continue mm -hmm. it. Well, what we want to avoid also is having a member miss two meetings and then you could have that nobody, you know, mm -hmm. that you it stays form. open for a year. Right, but if, form, we, right. if we're not, meet, if it's not on the agenda for a certain number of months, then they, can yeah, that be done? It can. It's just, you know, I mean, what if it isn't until June? Is it? Fair process to continue it now for five months, um, hoping that you know, for instance, that all the commissioners will stay the same. If someone or two leave, and all of a sudden we have a quorum issue, you know, it becomes a bigger deal when it, it's time for that voting. That is the issue. So if we get a new commissioner, could they be part of this? Not at this a continued hearing. They right, they couldn't then because right. I think we are shooting for March or April, not June. To come back. Mm -hmm. But the planning board process, I mean, that could take, you know. Usually you say, you know, there's so much time before even an application you'll see before you can get into a public hearing. They might might take two meetings for the planning board to Because they have more on their agenda but they have more than we do. Right. So I mean I'm not get in here pretty fast. You know, it's already uh, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I don't think even if you went to the planning board apply tomorrow, you probably wouldn't come back to you until, you know, at least April. Wow. That's just my guess. Well, we wouldn't of course that's because there's a Time to get on, and it's a time for them to write it up. Right. Uh, but if we had encouragement, we would just be doing our drawings, expecting that they'll be approved or generally approved. So we then wouldn't we stop come work. back here with the drawings even before. Mm -hmm. I guess that's. What's I mean, the advantage? Yeah. What What do we What is the advantage? Yeah. Of what? Of the delaying until after the planning board has finished its deliberation. Well, just the. Only if it's gonna, they're not gonna be doing providing the detail that we might feel we need. Well, we don't do that. We, we can't decide that. We, we, we give them the chance to do it. No, but do you, we have to decide if we feel that we have enough detail to issue the certificate. That's what we were saying. If we don't have enough detail, and there's a concern about just keeping the meeting open I, I, until I, they go to the planning. I think we're what crossing bridges is, before we get to them. Um, I fell a list of 11 things that I think the commission's interested in seeing more detail on. I think Marianne might have, she's got a similar list and there may be some more. So, um, so Bruce, what we're, what, sorry, what we're saying is that they, if they're not going to invest in tweaking all those details and coming back right. with you know, more refined plans until they go through the planning board process, we can offer our comments today, but I don't see the point well, of having continue to meet if they're going to change, you know. Well, that's that, that, then that's that's an if, right. which is not the, I know, I know. which is right. in their control. Right. Um, but I, the other I'll point is, if we you. share this, we might think what we're being advised is to request that by let's say the end of January, so that we can close this application. Either we close it by issuing the certificate, not issuing the certificate, or they withdraw it without prejudice, which means they come back and we pick up where we left off with what's... We're not going to withdraw without prejudice. My name is Michael Pell, and I'm just here to help with the legal stuff, okay? And what we need, I believe, and I think, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, um, we can't go to the planning board without something clear. That's what the certificate is all about. And of course, the certificate can have reasonable conditions. It can be subject to approval by the planning board. It can also provide, if we have to make some other changes, that we must come back to you. But what we cannot do, okay, is go to the planning board with nothing but what amounts to a, a wink and a nod. That was okay. At I, I don't believe we're talking about a wink and a nod. Oh, good. Thank you. So I, I prefer you not go on in that vein. Okay. Um, what we are saying, if I may clarify at least my understanding of it, uh, is that we want to see if we can arrive at consensus today 
or the end of January of what we endorse and support okay. of what you've already achieved. We would say that in a memo to the planning board. Oh, good. Thank you. We would say Amherst Media has proposed this, 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 and this. The massing and all the things that you mentioned. And we endorse that. We cannot go the final step of giving a certificate of approval until the detail is done, because that is our regulatory constraint. And so if the timing for Mr. Gillen is that he is unable to do everything at one time, then it makes sense for him to do with us what we can do right now in terms of agreeing on what we support, do the next step with the planning board, in which we've written to them to say, we endorse this, we can't take the final step until a subsequent time, because by, by regulatory requirement, we need to look at detail, okay? That's what we do with every group that comes to us for approval. We look at detail because, because yeah, we, we We had an applicant that said at the top of, you know, the, um, the columns, they were gonna have a certain design. We issued the certificate of appropriateness. They didn't think that they could meet that design. They had to come back. We sure. said, no, we're sticking by it. But I, I didn't want, you know, yeah. need to cut you off, but yeah, what yeah. we, it, we're just saying that what we can't do is keep the meeting open. So, so, that months gets, and months. so that gets to the second point, Ms. Mayo. There's a distinction between what we can do on behalf of the planning board before we pick up the post-planning board stage of this and what we can do as a commission with people coming on and off the commission. And if we hold the vote open for months and months and months, we will not have a quorum of people who have been here for the discussion. So that it may be that the most advantageous decision would be to decide where we are, come up with a consensus uh, statement, and then close without prejudice. So, and we can be very explicit about this, so that we will then pick it up again when we're ready. But that means that when we pick it up again, whoever is here for the discussion is able to vote on the final decision. Whereas some of us will be traveling during the winter, and will be traveling during the spring. Or somebody turns off. Or somebody goes off. We are very concerned about having a quorum because again, in terms of regulation, a person can only miss one meeting. Or we could, you know, give you, you know, provide a list and some of it's, you know, items that have been on the list of what we need to see so we really have a, you know, good picture of the building yes. that you could get, bring back to us by the end of the month and then we might be able to issue a certificate of appropriateness and then if you make changes, you would come back to us, you know, and request the changes. I take that approach. That's why I think there's a bridge that we're crossing that we don't know Right, can I ask a question? We cannot present you a virtually real picture of the building. That's not possible. If you look at those large detail drawings, and if you look at Pease Place, which has not one note on it, how do those details, how do these details conflict? We saw, no, we had slides that were much more detailed Well, than we that. weren't given those. Okay, but we, we definitely- We asked for them, we weren't given okay. them. I don't know, we- um, uh, 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 we knew the what question like is, like. the question is, and Bruce, you know, the elements are described there. We submitted an outline spec which said what the materials were. That's a blow up detail of certain particulars of the building. Now, if you want to see that as a virtually real photo no, representation no. building, we can't do it. That, that would cost a fortune and it wouldn't allow any institution to build anything on that site. They're nonprofit. I don't think we're uh, separate for that. 
We could give plenty more of those. Well, I'll argue that I don't think that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, we should be, we should imagine or become sufficiently confident in our abilities as a clinician to be able to take uh, a detail like this and see it in relation to uh, a smaller scale uh, for elevation of the building. Um, and if we feel that we can do that confidently, all of us, then what John says, uh, what, what, what Gillen says, <coughs> says, is that uh, if uh, they provide dimensions for the items here that they noted um, and maybe take uh, and maybe make these onto you know larger sheets so it that is, you can there see is a it. scale that's yeah. the scale of three quarter inch I know it's a big that's scale and it's very useful and, and uh, so if, uh, if, if if we had uh, these with the data and maybe material samples <coughs> or maybe we uh, we say that uh, um, one of the conditions is that uh, the 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 uh, <coughs> we can do this or not, but we can say uh, subject to approval of a of a, of a material sampling board. Mm -hmm. So that could be a condition, perhaps. Right. I mean, my thought, though, John, with here, there was a JPEG that you sent me that may have been to scale, but when we print it, it's not to scale. So if we actually put it on a sheet with title block and everything. We have dimensions here. We don't know the size of the glazing. I don't know if this is the scale anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, it'd be great to have then a profile showing is there any relief in this. So you know, and, and you know, on the other section, a simple you know profile showing you know what's the relief of the pediment and the fascia and anything in the front with some dimensions. I'm not. We're not. We, no one's ever said it needed to be a photorealistic uh, montage. What we're asking for is enough information for the commission to know. To, to say, okay, what is this door actually going to look like? Is it recessed? Is everything just flush, or is there, you know, some some relief here? What is the glazing and the treatment here? You say, you know, just glass pane and a panel. Well, you know, I, you know, there's not a lot of description here beyond that, and you know, no, um, I didn't see any description here. Well, so Peace is, again, but, we're not. Jennifer had said Peace Place is a different context, so it has. You know, well, yes. the commission saw what they saw and they needed to do to make a decision there. What I'm hearing but is we saw it flashed up. We actually right. saw the, the, the lights that were going outside. Well, Bruce yeah. had you know, comments here. Right. So what we're saying is, can these be improved or, you know, with the comments from the commission so they're, they're, um, you know, they're comfortable making a decision? So you can take a hand drawing and maybe with more annotation and dimensioning, the commission is comfortable, right? I mean, is that, is that fair, Bruce, to what you're saying? Uh, I think so. Um, I mean, with windows and doors, for example, we could ask for a product submittal. Yes. Um, and so we would know the product, and that would relieve mm -hmm. uh, them of uh, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of strife. Right. But I think you're mm -hmm. right that there's some additional details of the scale that were sectional yeah. through the pediment, through the roof overhang, uh, possibly well, through the through the window head and so mm -hmm. forth, uh, vertically through the head and sill. And, and, and uh, uh, there might be one or two other locations like that. But my sense is that we can we can create a list. I've already made a pretty good stab at it from my point of view, and that would uh, give them the opportunity to provide what we need. I'm you know I'm uh, I'm leaving here in a month, actually in five weeks. Uh, just one more meeting cycle, typically. Do what was necessary. Can I just say one last thing, Nate? We submitted exactly what you said two presentations ago. We had a 24 by 36 inch sheet, hard lined digitally drawn with all the elevations, everything on it that you could scale. We haven't changed the concept of, of what we're using to do this building. And this we thought would be more exploratory, uh, more explanatory, explanatory for you than going to that 24 by 36 drawing, 
on this screen, which winds up to be 12 inches by 24 inches, or 12 inches by 8 inches, and you can't see what you're talking about. We submitted what you're asking for, and it was totally passed over, I think. No, I don't I think, remember comments on it. But see here, yeah, I think I would try that again. So I mean, you know, this is helpful, yeah, like Lou said, but we don't, the commission, well, we, can't get a sense for, we can't get a sense for this in terms of how this relates to anything else in the building. And so how, how is, you know, this really for hand It's down here. But, well, it's on, uh, on the big drawing we have, the elevation you know, shows exactly I that. Think, yeah. I'm there are eight scales. Have, I'm saying you have a lot of information, <laughs> here, but if the commission asks questions, I think there's more information that could be added to this to try to get them to a decision-making point. And so if, you know, if, they're, if they don't seem comfortable, you know, like I'm saying, some more dimensioning or a sectional profile, that would be... I think they're comfortable. I think they're telling us because they've already done it. Yeah. But, and, but not uh, for this concept. And, and uh, maybe, but uh, so... If, well, even if it's just a matter of putting it all in one place, because if you issue a certificate of appropriateness, it, it's attached to document. Yeah, the document application. It's not in one place. Yeah, we've no, but the mentions do that. that. We've done it already. Yeah. It's I mean, easy to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just, I mean, you, you, you asked specifically for an artistic elevation. Yeah, that no, no, took, no, we appreciate that. That's, that would, that's right. why we lost all our right, elevation right. and notes, because the artist, John, like, was making right. a beautiful But drawing. so it all has to cut, I we guess, together in one it. place. That's where we all actually it drew it digitally right. to be able to hand draw over it for the record. We have all those drawings. Okay. We have it all. Right. We, it would take us two hours to composite that's, on the sheet, that, that, but there'd that still is, be a lot of questions. We don't no, want to do a exactly working drawing sense. with dimensions. And that's why I'm trying to moderate the the direction that my colleagues seem to maybe going in, which I thought was a bridge to the, it was a bit too far, because I don't think it's beyond you to provide this information in a relatively short time, and I think you should give them. Oh well, that would be our preference. Yes, yes that, that would, would absolutely be the preference. Yeah, I yes. thought so. Yes. 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 I had simply heard Mr. Gillen saying this process and then the planning board process, that being until March, and my thinking, oh dear, will we have a quorum? Yeah, I was thinking March. you actually that, wanted that to was keep it open. What my worry was. And yeah, then there was, you did want to keep it open, and that's... And I don't want to see a new commission either. I mean, right. we want to, we, we know you guys. Right, so we would prefer to see, yeah, like that all in one place so we can make a decision or not. Before Moose goes to Australia. Well... Ideally, I mean, why not? I mean, it's yeah, and you would too, because you don't want to have to re... I mean, if... I It'd be nice. Right. And if you're saying it's something you can... You know, we could set a date certain to come back in January if that works. Well. Okay. Well, we have to have the comments today. I mean, so if yeah, we need, we need, we need today, right. well, so. um, can we try for that? Yes. Why don't you start with your? Can we? Can, can we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we want to have any discussion? Well, do we want to um, take public comment and then yeah, come back to we, this? We probably should. Yeah. Could, mm -hmm. but yeah. The, the question would be, would the public comment be informed by Right, by, by this. Answering right. This? I agree that it would. Yes, because that might answer some of it. Okay, uh, so I would say to if I if I was uh, doing what I usually do in this situation, I would have a foot chart on the wall and I would write all this down so that everybody could see it and we could work on it as a group. But we don't you have that. Up a little bit, Bruce, because we're having. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I mean, uh, the, the mic is coming to you. Oh, that's for the audio. Oh, that's yeah. the no, audio. that's uh, okay. something else. Well. Um, Let's, let's do. I, I think that we need a north elevation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I there's a couple of things in here that are personal expressions, which you all might disagree with, but I would hope that the trim stock that is used, corner boards, freeze boards, plinth boards, casings for windows and doors and so forth, would be five quarter stock, in other words, a little thicker than than what you mostly see, and that means that the clavards would would nest nicely behind it. It, it just Give has it a, it, it gives it a meteor. My, mm -hmm. I don't know whether that's a technical term, but it's probably understood. Look, so I would hope for that. But uh, number three would be to provide the sizes of all the trim pieces, and there are many of them, and it's, it's, a, it's a fairly richly uh, designed uh, detail here. So that uh, um, just have the, um, the material sizes uh, noted for each of these pieces of trim. I think we know the material. Um, on the three quarter inch wall section or inch. Yes, inch wall yes, or anywhere really, so long as it's uh, so long as it's clear. Um, if you do a trim schedule, but I don't think you want that. 
Uh -huh. oh, and you could just note it on here, I think, would be the clearest for everybody. Uh, the pediment material, well, we've already determined that. I think it could be it's tongue and groove material, flat yeah. or, or stucco. Uh, if we have a preference, we should state it. Um, mm -hmm. um, the oculus window, um, I think it would be nice to have a product submittal on that so we know what it looks like. And also, there's a, the, the casing trim more. around that. Um, again, a personal preference is that it should mm -hmm. be wider be, so that that thing sits. Mm -hmm. If it's going to sit in the end of that pediment, it should have a, a presence. And and, uh, and I see why it would be a small window, but it could be made to look bigger by a, a, substantially, uh, a substantial annulus of trim. So number nine would be uh, the, do uh, the, the entry doors. Um, so a, a, an elevation, a mm -hmm. detail elevation, and a product submittal. Mm -hmm. uh, the same with the windows. So that's the oculus, the entry doors, and the windows. Um, then uh, the detail sections that we were talked to complement these. These are detailed elevations. So some detailed sections mm -hmm. through the pediment, through the roof overhang, vertically through the window from head to sill. Um, there might be some similar uh, around the window. I'm not sure whether there might be other details, but that would seem to be the, the ones that are most obvious. And that comes to the end of my list, but I'm sure it's not an exclusive, an exhaustive list. Why would there be sections? And this is not working going. No. I could see doing one section. Well, it's a section like this bill that just, I mean, here, for example, you've got the overhangs and right. so forth. It would be nice to have the dimensions of those yeah, so that yeah, we can yeah. see. So okay. the uh, sections said through sections the... sections, and I think they may think that they're going to see a sheet of wall sections. Oh, no, no. no, a no, detail, no. I said a detail no. sections like the detail right. elevations. Yeah. So you've got, you've got, uh, uh, they can be hand-drawn like this, as long as they're to scale and, and, uh, and, 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 and communicate accurately the scale. impression. You, you just don't know what scale it is, and I don't either. Yeah. Well, the camera will do that and make them larger. Well, anyway, so that they can have the dimension, so that the overhangs are known and so forth. And, and uh, that, that is all I had in my list uh, no that problem. I could think of for the moment. And again, that's what has to be attached to a certificate, so it's what we did. Yeah. 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 Well, Okay. Uh, do you have any? Yes, I've got some. Um, so I would like to see uh, the design of the parking lot, uh, the entrance from the parking lot, the lighting in the parking lot, the um, screening of the parking lot so the cars aren't visible from the women's center. Um, I believe that 14 Gray Street has a kind of a stone. Uh, is it? Yes. And so I would like to know how your separation blends with their stone, their stone, because I match it and just extend. Okay. It. Yes. Well, I, I I'd like to see that. Be I mean I mean I'd like to know that that was going to happen yes. because I think it would be more it would be more yeah. attractive. Uh, yes, to the material samples. Um, I do want to know whether the door off Main Street is recessed or flushed. Um, okay, sorry, now I'm going to have to get into some, because I did a lot of detail last night, excuse me. Uh, yes, what will line the parking lot area? Maybe I think we already said that in terms of the Women's Center. Um, Sorry, what was that? You mean line screen? Uh, what will line uh, in the sense of screen? Yes. Oh. Okay. okay. Not this wasn't to the, the, the shrubs, which was no, that's, that's it. Oh, there's no more fencing. It's just the plantings. Now. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which uh, I think is preferred for the yes from the women's center point. Of view. Yes. Uh, is there a question? This is a question about a question uh, about the material used to enclose the storage tanks. Is that something that we need to consider? Oh, I'm not sure how much they're enclosed anymore. I okay. The roof overhang, but okay. And yeah, we have the columns, and we're going to put a fence at least between the parking and that, so the cars don't drive into the. Okay. Uh, okay. Units. But yeah, there'll be a fence, and we show that. And north elevation. Have we talked about how much of the concrete of the retaining walls will be exposed? No. Have we talked about no, you that. you say it'll be all stone. stone. All stone. Okay. Just I'm just checking my old notes yeah. against. Yes, I've got retaining wall detail. New, new info the, uh, here as well, because <laughs> I've got notes from every one of our meetings of kind of you know asks. Okay. Um, 
Sorry, that just... Um, okay, I think this a lot of this is repetitious. Um, sorry. Uh, yes, unless I have a brainstorm, I'm done. Okay. okay. Thank you. Do you any? Yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. I mean, my only thought would be if you go back to the Main Street elevation, it would be to show more of the property and context. So, if you from the south elevation, so you see, for now you can see the retaining wall to the west, you know, the left of the building. And it doesn't really show where it ends on the property. So, you know, to me, it would be helpful to say, you know, where is Gray Street on the one end and where does the property line on the other to know the whole context of the design. So, you know, how far does the well, you would really be able to see the building if we did that. Be well, but I, but I think that you know this is disingenuous in a way. You're showing trees all behind the building when really if there aren't any. There, you know, there, you would see 14 <laughs> Gray Street and the rest of them. It actually might benefit you to see the rest of the buildings behind you because they're much taller. But I think, to me, you know, the question is where does that, re you know, where does that section cut off on the west end? Is that, you know, where is the Hills House there? In that in that, that section, that's the purpose of the yeah. That was the flyover. The flyover, but, but I think, but the, the right wall though is now very. The, the, the visible wall is new to the west <coughs> of the building. Before the wall, yes, was you know flush with the, yes. the western end. So it's just you know I want it's in the site plan. You can see yep. it. I just want you know I'm pointing out something for the commission to you know be aware of. It goes about ten feet more. If you're, if you're you know. Um, my only other thought too is the oh, well, you could provide a visual. Well, from yeah. the north view, will probably be more obvious. Um, um, yeah, this uh, th this site plan shows plantings that are screening the vehicles, which we've already discussed, mm -hmm. which will also screen that yes. wall. Right. So that's probably not accurate because there would be bushes and the bushes that are beyond the You'll house. You'll see them right. Aren't there, but the bushes. That's where they would be. Yeah. yeah. Um, should be there, but aren't there. And it looks yeah. like um, before the lighting was all under soft and everything, it doesn't look like there's any uh, external light posts or anything. The zoning bylaw says unless you have more than eight parking spaces, you're not required to provide lighting. Okay. So we haven't addressed that yet, figuring out. Yeah, we'll face that later. Sure. If we have lighting, you're not going to see it. It's going to be in right. soffits or I'm going to do something mm -hmm. to yeah. hide it from you. And one thing with the site plan, I think the handicapped parking space needs to be moved closer to the back door. So where it is now is right off Gray Street. It's, it's allowed to be within 200 feet. Although the building commissioner looked at it and he said if it's available to be closer, he wouldn't recommend putting it over 100 feet from the entrance. But it's, it's just a, we well, can't. They're already down to eight spaces. Yeah, but, it, but you could move it without losing any spaces. I'm just. Well. Okay, I'll, I'll bring it over and you can show me. Well, because then the handicapped sign would need to be, you know, it's just a matter of you could bury, if you move the location, you would hide the sign. So that's not a, you know, the sign right now at, at the end of the handicapped space is actually something you'd see from Main Street. It would be, you see the back of a, of a pla you know, a sign, whereas if you put it behind the building in space one and two, you wouldn't lose parking, but you wouldn't see the sign. It's just How would visible. You, how would I'll you try know? to do that. I'll yeah. try to study it, but we did try it. But yeah. Yeah. It um, wastes a bunch of space because of the eight foot next to it. Yeah, but you and could, we can't give that up somewhere else, but we'll try again. But I think right next to the mechanical equipment, you lock, there's not a space. looks like there's five feet and then space one, so you almost have an unloading aisle right. without a little, um, you know, the rest of it, I mean, I don't, you know, it's really it's, up to the commission for questions. I think, it's I, do, feet. I think the, um, you know, I, I agree with uh, Bruce that a little more explanation of the details, uh, you know, the drawings would be really helpful. Um, let me, let me stop you, Nate. Excuse me, Michael Tell. See, that, I think, is precisely the problem. A little more detail on the buildings. What on earth does that mean? We, we've, of, we've itemized that, That's exactly it. You two, for, thank you so much, because you two exactly listed out precisely what details you thought we needed to provide. And I would like to think that was hopefully very helpful. Right. And, 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 and we do that I in, in, that in Bruce. Yes, we do that in collaboration with our staff member here. I understand. Yes. I'm just trying to point out sure. the difference between saying a little more detail, which isn't helpful, and what you two did, which was a godsend, for which I sure. thank you both no, so I much. reference Bruce's comments. I'm not going into the... Oh, good. Thank I'm you. I'm just saying what Bruce said in terms okay. of more detail. I'm sorry. I didn't understand yeah. that. Thank you so much. Sure. 
Um, and really, then it's up to the other commissioners, right, if they have questions. So I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I have one either. I have a question for maybe for you, Nate. Yes. Um, um, I would also be interested in colours, but I'm not sure whether we have the purview to be interested in colours, or was that an internal conversation amongst us that we can decide whether we want to? Colour is kind of out. It is. Kind of out. Okay, yeah. well, let's stop but, but, there then. But material we? samples, but material samples it's are a, not it's, out. It's exempt from, um, you know, from review. So I think, yeah. you know, material isn't, but colour is. So. Yeah, we can't do color. Pen. We'll show you a few yeah. bushes, but we're, you're not supposed to look at them either. You know? <laughs> you're right about that. Well, the commission, as a, as a, it's funny, the commission's done, um, traditional lands, traditionally landscaping is exempt when it's used as a screen. If it's something more than just a, a planting, it, it can be under review. Um, I just feel that this, well, personally, this is something we, well, that we should do and we really, I, I, I don't think any of us want to, prevent the Women's Center from being able to continue to host events. Neither so I think we. that's, well, I know, that's why I say none of us do. None of us do, and that's why I think everybody's okay. Right. Normally, maybe we wouldn't, although we did do the screening once before for a house where they were uh, Amherst College resident. Mm -hmm. so that was going to have a permanent dumpster, and we said that oh, yeah. had to be shielded from, yeah, the neighbors right. didn't yes. have to look at the dumpster. And we also had landscaping concerns on Peace Place. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they moved the house so the trees wouldn't come down. We're but good, we're good. Yeah. Um, do any of the commissioners have any other questions? Bruce, you said you might have a question? No, I did it already. Oh, you did it already? Yeah, the color. Yeah. Oh, Possibly color. we should go through the commission and see where we all are right now. Well, should we do yeah. public comment? Do I think public we should comment. do public comment. Yeah. I think so, that's probably about yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, How many people do we have to want public? Okay. Be able to get through. I'm going to start at this end first. Um, okay. Ms. Greenbaum? Just identify who you are. I'm uh, Hilda Greenbaum, I'm not the Emerson, I'm in a letter um, to this person. Uh, I find the M3 on the Main Street side rather ambiguous. Looking at this plan and looking at the facade, I can't tell whether there's a portico or whether there's a porch. I'm, I don't understand quite what the peak roof is over the door. Is there? Some kind of a portico with a with a roof that connects with the big roof, or is it inset? And then, if, if that's the case, I don't understand what the pediment is there. That to me is very unclear. It it looks like it's inset in the in the. Uh, it is. It, it, but on the picture, it looks like it's sticking out with some columns, so no, it's very confusing. No, no, that's, a, that's an old, that's a old previous, one. Right. The picture you showed today? No. no. This one. This, this one. That yeah. one, that one's to me, but that's ambiguous. Then, then where, does the, where is that roof? This is fully, full, this is, that, there's no stick out. It doesn't stick out from Well, I don't here. understand what this that is. This is recessed in, about recessed two feet. In. Oh, that's a recess? Yes. The top is a recess? And the stick top up. goes okay. through straight. And uh -huh. you're looking at the foundation plan, which is pulled in, and not the roof plan. The roof plan goes okay, straight. So, the the, the, so what I'm looking at, that triangle, is that in. It's not up. Great. Right. And those aren't columns. So the if you look at the maybe the, the west triangle is the same plane as the wall. The west elevation might show it, right? There's another. The floor plan shows it. Yeah, well, I'm, to me, that was ambiguous because one. No, this like, is the site plan. Look at the floor plan. Oh, well, all right. I can't look at them all at once. Yeah. My age is showing. Uh, the, my other question if you have no purview over the color, what's to prevent them to come in with something like purple siding with pink Nothing. mountains? Actually. I mean, that's that answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's something to consider. <laughs> no, no, it specifically says in our bylaw that we can't, right. that color is out of our purview. And that's something that people actually fear about local historic districts that will be telling people what color they can and can't paint their house. So it Man, specifically okay. says and we can't. As a member of the we just committee have with Maureen, who, exactly. Marianne, who Thank uh, you for having got faith. this through, time, through the board, we deliberately did that so that it would pass. Because if they, if right. everyone felt though they had to get their house color approved every time right. they want to paint we that house, it exactly. would have been never gone through. Yeah. Now I wish that they had done that. <laughs> <laughs> so but, uh, just you, you asked. This is the uh, dotted line is the roof line. 
Okay. And this is the recess in about five feet. Okay. So just quickly about the, the color, at the very beginning of this process, I actually um, had a conversation with our capital campaign manager with uh, the women's club about helping to actually choose the color based on some of the complementary colors around the area. So that's something we've always kept in mind and tried to consult with, with that's people great. with. So that's good. That's good. That's good. we would respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, going around the room, um, yes. Yes, hi, I'm Felicity Hurst, <coughs> I represent Harm's Way, I spoke to you before. I guess I'm a little confused now about this plan and the 3D flyby that we were looking at last session. My understanding of the purpose of that flyby analysis, that 3D analysis, was to give the board an understanding of how this building and how the site was going to look in a general sense in the context of the entire neighborhood. And that, my understanding was that that modeling was based on a different plan, a different <coughs> site plan. That it was not this, I mean, unless I'm misunderstanding, this is a different site plan than what was looked at. So. Is it? I mean, it doesn't look like the same site plan. No, the only difference is that the In studio terms. had been here, and with the same footprint, we flip it over here. Okay. Because okay. we know how to do that. Exactly the same. Great. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Hi. Just identify. My name is Cynthia Prado, and I'm uh, on the board of directors of the Amherst Women's Club. Oh. And um, we have a question about the area of land that people identify as the meadow. And um, we have a concern um, because we would like to know if it's going to be like mowed and maintained like a lawn or if it's going to look like it did this summer, uh, completely um, not maintained. Uh, because we have a lot of our functions around the front lawn and we're just wondering if this commission has anything to say about how the uh, land would look. So yeah, the Local Historic District Commission doesn't regulate the maintenance of a property in that respect in terms of, you know, is a lawn mode. I mean, they could have it, they could, you know, have a metification process for pollinators. So there's different treatments of a landscape that this commission doesn't um, have jurisdiction over. So it, you know, doesn't do anything with the landscaping. The, the planning board, you know, it's going to go for site plan review. The planning board may have some site conditions that may address that, but typically, unless it's a nuisance, um, there's really no, there's nothing telling someone they have to cut their lawn when it's you know six inches or anything. So there's not, um, there really isn't. You know, if it becomes a there, you know, like a health nuisance, then maybe, but otherwise, there's really nothing that regulates you know lawn or landscape treatment. Yeah, and it may be that good neighborhood policy. As Dr. Shabazz was saying before, be about quid pro quo. coordination about colors, <laughs> it would also be coordination about the <laughs> meadows. So. Okay, um, yes, Mr. Wilbert. <clears throat> Is it acoustically. Who is that? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yes, could you say, I'm sorry, <laughs> identify your, your name and where you live? Ed Wilford. And you live on Grace Street? Grace Street. Grace Street, okay. Is it acoustically prudent? to have the studio next to the driving driveway passage. Just something that might have not been considered. Oh, yeah, In terms the, of noise? Yeah. It's going to be masonry. The walls around the, that are masonry behind the wood siding. OK. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Steve Judge. I live at 151 Amity Street. Um, and for purposes of disclosure, I'm on the ZBA, um, but this is I, I'm not speaking as a member of the ZBA, and I'm not representing the ZBA. I'm, just, I'm speaking as a private citizen. Yeah. Um, I'm, I fear that my comments are coming a little bit late. This train has gone a little farther down the road than I thought, but I hope that you will, even though they might be in politic, I hope you'll still consider them and give it some consideration in your deliberation. I oppose a certificate of, 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 of appropriateness for the Amherst meeting. Media building at this time. 
I feel that the, the historic district, the planning commission, Amherst Media themselves, and the town are working really, really hard to try and force a square peg into a round hole. Quite simply, Amherst Media requires a building of size and mass that's not appropriate for this site. The commission and the applicant can consider window styles and colors and the, the, uh, the framing and all the other details, which is really important, and that's your job but it's not gonna resolve the fundamental problem with the occupation. And I think that is, this is the beginning of one of Amherst's most beautiful and historic streetscapes. There are beautiful old homes that run from there up to the park, including the Dickinson home. Families and organizations have committed time, resources, their efforts to maintain these historic structures, and their efforts have benefited our town. A large commercial building simply doesn't belong here. I understand that Amherst Media is in a bind. They bought this lot, they're trying hard to fit all their needs into a building appropriate for the space, but I think it's a fool's errand. The fundamental problem is that the application, the applicant made a mistake when they bought the wrong lot for this, and they bought the wrong lot for this purpose. It's not your duty or the town's duty to bend our rules to permit an inappropriate building which will permanently compromise the historic district just because this applicant made a mistake in the, in the lot they purchased. Amherst Media has other options, and they should pursue them. They should cut their losses and seek another lot. I understand they have an offer for the property from the adjacent landowner who's willing to protect that site in perpetuity. The outcome is the, this, that outcome would be the best. It protects the horse historic district, and it would act in the best interest of the entire town. But there's just no way that Amherst Media's needs can be met and not compromise the historic character of this district. I applaud the fact that the, district historic, that the Dickinson Historic Commission has worked with the applicant. That's appropriate. That's what you're supposed to do. It's a lot of hard work. I recognize that. But your responsibility is to guard, protect, and preserve the historic nature of the district. And if meeting your responsibility means that you have to deny a certificate of appropriateness for a large commercial building, within the historic district, you should do that. No matter how much we support Amherst Media, and no matter how hard everybody has worked to try to force the square peg into a round hole. I thank you for the opportunity to give you my views, and I have two questions that I think would be important for your consideration. One, what's the height of this building at the peak, the roof peak, how high is it gonna be? What, what do you see from the streetscape? And secondly, square footage is important, but footprint, and height of the surrounding buildings are also really important to look at. So I think those are two things you should be looking at because that gives you a sense not just for the mass but for the, the, the face of the building. We appreciate that. We've, we've had a lot of conversation about that. Yep, I know. Where we are now. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, or do you? Did you have your oh, hand up? Hey. Yeah, and then I'll get to the back room. Sorry. Okay, do you want to? Okay, okay. Uh, Dorothy Pam, 229 Amity Street. Um, and again, I'm speaking as a private citizen, but as a member of the Amherst Women's Club. Um, I really, I second, there's been so much hard work and effort on this. But when the first pictures that were up again today, the, the western wing particularly just sticks way out. And it, it began to look to me kind of like two tobacco barns at slightly odd angles and I could not see how it fit in the space. And um, I, at a previous meeting, um, I haven't read all the details of your charge, but somebody referred to you're supposed to protect the viewscapes of the historical district. Um, certainly that is seriously compromised coming from the east. Um, I think our historical district, I think we have to work so hard to protect every single piece of historic property in this town, and this is the most beautiful part of it. So I, I got the feeling we were trying to dress up Cinderella's stepsisters for the ball, and I think that's not the right building for the right space. Although I totally support Amherst Media mm -hmm. and the work it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't, thank you, want to get into a back and forth with all, but I just feel like I need to um, make a statement that this is my, uh, I guess, personal opinion. Um, this parcel was rezoned as for business neighborhood and it's beyond this commission's purview to override that now i think that on the corner of main and gray street 
basically there's been like a vacant lot and that's been very nice for the town as you drive in and for the people who live on Gray Street. I mean, if next door to me, where there could be a house, there was just a vacant lot with trees, that would be great. But if the person who owned it decided they wanted to put a house up, you know, I couldn't stop them because even in a historic district where my house is because the trees were preferable. So, you know, uh, the commission has worked. I, we do not feel that the structure as it's proposed now is out of scale to where it is, that it is not even larger than some of the houses that are adjacent to it. There, it is smaller. The hill goes up, so it's not higher than the other houses. I mean, we might all prefer the open green space, but the property, you know, was the, the, the owner of the property purchased it to put their office there, which they are allowed to do, and we can't do what I think would be a, a taking of that. Um, and yes, there could always have been a house that could go up on the corner of Main and Gray, and then you'd have a different viewscape, you know, driving east, um, you know, driving west from the east. Just like if, you know, my neighbor puts a house up, it's going to change the viewscape, viewscape of the street. But, you know, that per the owner of the property can't be denied the opportunity to put a house on the property <coughs> because the neighbors have been enjoying the trees there. Um, do you have? Well, I, I was asking the same question. Barry Simon, I live on Dickinson Street. And I was asking the same thing. That I, I was under the impression that we were going to be able to see from the flyover view what the views would look like. But you, I guess, just answered that by saying you're not in charge of views. No, we, because no, I, no, no, we are we in charge are, of views. I'm just saying that because we prefer nothing there, you know, because somebody may prefer nothing there, you know, I, that's. Right, but there's no way to see that. The statement was made earlier by uh, at some other meeting that you can't see the Dickinson Street coming from the west and Main Street, and that's completely untrue. I just drove that 10 minutes ago. Or, and right, I think the statement was it's going to look different. And, but it would be nice, and I thought we were going to be able to do that from the model view, to be able to see how, at street level, how the views would change, and I haven't seen anything. Did we have a slide? We had that. We did all that last time. We yeah, did. we did all that last time. We yeah. did, yeah. And it did, it, it is obstructed here. It is obstructed, that's for sure. Yes. Yes. It is I mean, obstructed. It, it is going to look different than it looks now. I mean, so, there's no uh, doubt about that. Okay, so, it, and I guess my only other comment is I don't see how the storefront glass relates in any way to the historic neighborhood. Um, the large pieces of fixed glass. I mean, it's storefront glass. At night, it will be black. I don't understand how that relates in any way to the neighborhood. Could I do two clarifications? Uh, the first is um, when town meeting uh, rezoned this, we were given a presentation by the owner, uh, Jerry Gadera, who owned the two properties and who said to us, these building lots will be developed. Leaving them undeveloped is not an option. And it struck me at the time that the only way to keep it the same is to have a miraculously invisible building on that corner, which is there and which you've built but which you can't see. And so everybody who goes into it and interacts in it is also invisible because these are these are building lots so we have to work with that reality now well, excuse me your second question was I can't even count it I was just asking about the, the glazing I mean glazing. Yes, what, glazing. what we were struggling with and this really is a struggle we have three different streetscapes with three different style prerequisites so Gray Street is one stylistic issue. And Main Street is a very different stylistic issue, particularly if you look at some of the commercial buildings on the other side of Main Street. But there's only one important view, and that's Emily Dickens' house. I mean, come on. No one comes from out of town to go to Elements Hot Tub 
specifically or to go to Amos Media. How do you but know lots that? of people come from out of town to see the Dickinson house. Right? So we, there's we only have people, people who actually come Let's out. not have cross debate. Okay. Yeah. Come on, from our side. You can't just say whatever you want either. Um, you haven't spoken, so keep it. Very briefly, my biggest goal would be to have a win-win solution here. I wish there were one. I just wanted to say one quick thing to correct something that wasn't correct that was said earlier. Amherst Media doesn't have another option right now. There are ideas that could, you know, people sitting around a table could say, oh, how about this, how about that? But there's no hard option to this right now. And if we wanted a win-win situation, there needs to be one because right now there is no alternative. People have talked about the high school, but that was an idea. It has never been discussed by the school committee. Uh, people have raised questions that haven't been addressed. So there's, just want to clarify, there's no other on the table option right now. There maybe could be, but there isn't one. Thank you. And again, that's beyond our purview. Right. right. Thank you. Uh, yes. I was just going to make the observation, and we've said this before, um, and I think we've all recognized this before, but the, what town meeting did about rezoning or what Mr. Gadero was planning to do or not do, th that doesn't matter. What matters is, or what we have, what Amherst Media can or can't do. What matters to this commission is, does this building fit on this site in this neighborhood? That's what you have to decide. Right, and, and the commission may decide that it does. We, I recognize that. My position, client's position, and what you are hearing from a lot of other residents is, it doesn't. And we can have a disagreement about that, but you do not necessarily need to feel compelled to give Amherst Media a certificate of appropriateness if it doesn't fit. That's that's what I you have to decide. That. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Can you identify? Uh, uh, attorney Matt Massengill, I represent Harmsway. I'm also a, a resident of Amherst. I just wanted this stuff, this idea that the town meeting voted to rezone, then you can build. It's not correct. Well, we, it, yeah, I, but I know what yeah. you're saying. I just want to say that you guys have a different purview, and I understand that, but the mere going to town meeting and having it rezoned doesn't mean that a building will ever be put on that, that site. It's conditioned on meeting all the various permitting here, planning board, and everything else. I just don't think, I, th I, I continue to hear this, well, uh, town meeting approved this, a building must go on. That's not the case. It's condition. Uh, it was rezoned, and rezoning means uh, that they are under the condition of that zone to meet all all the requirements that the town will impose on them. So they're not guaranteed a right to build. Well, we that would be agreed. They would have it, and there has to be a proposal that fits. Yeah. Right. But reasonable. But I think what we're saying, but I've heard a couple of times tonight right. saying, okay, yeah, well, they rezoned it. It's okay. We can build on it. That's not the case. Now what we're saying is given the rezoning we are going we are looking at a business not a resident that we oh, okay. actually i think the rezoning clears the initial decision that something could go there and our purview is well after that as to whether it is appropriate in terms one of, of the design yeah. no, in terms Many, of what is no, one, i agree yeah. with what you said jim but it if is. that zoning wasn't changed we wouldn't be here tonight looking at an office we might be looking at a house yeah. that's the only way we look at the zoning I'm right. not saying that something has to go there or they have a right well, to have something it did sound it did sound like we well they do have a right they have a right no no i don't they know they don't you have, have to have you if it's appropriate if it fits the criteria right. and it can be commercial but it doesn't mean that you can build on it if it doesn't meet those right and that's why being appropriate. you know the first so all we're talking we about is if it's appropriate right. for the site exactly that's all exactly they have a right to go in front of you and the planning board right right that's their right um did you want to say something well maybe i think i'm talking to us here okay maybe so maybe this is a legacy of my time years ago on the planning board but it does seem that boards and commissions of this town um, have to take into consideration uh, concerning entitlements granted um, 
insofar as to uh, uh, completely uh, to, to, to be unreasonably uh, what's the right word if we were to uh, hold a standard that was perhaps as high as I initially would like to have held but have uh, come to the, the view that I haven't been able to persuade you of um, that uh, if, if we if, if we were of a mind to um, preserve the view as the primary goal as opposed to the goal that we have which is to um, work very hard I think as a commission to get the scale fitting as best we could and, and of course it's, we've stop. done a long way along that line and uh, so I'm much more comfortable in supporting or at least not opposing something that I initially was um, quite inclined to oppose. The a decision if we were to hold the uh, the view shared of, as the uh, all important thing which would actually mean that essentially nothing can go there. Um, we are exposing ourselves I think to the town at least anyway to the kind of legal actions that as I said the legacy of my days in the planning board we were as a board to some degree not to wantonly expose the town to those kinds of lawsuits. So I think there is some view, at least on my part, that um, there's a balance here and that, that, the, that the right of somebody to come before us or to come before the town with, a, with a, a, an application to, to put something on a site can't be wantonly disregarded um, or even disregarded by a very... Uh, um, <coughs> strenuous uh, application of what appropriate it might be, um, because I think to do so would uh, um, this commission would suffer, in some rep in its reputation would suffer if we were to behave that way. So I think we're doing the right thing. Um, we might disagree little bits amongst ourselves, because I would think that the scale could be, by means that I've discussed in the past, reduced somewhat. But I've come to the conclusion two meetings ago that I had persuaded you all as far as I could on that matter, and that uh, I had the, the choice to continue to make that rearguard action or to join the consensus in trying to build the I think you result. also said last time that you felt that they had responded to the request. Oh, to yes, and I, I do. That's, that's why I, that, uh, that this is, I think we've moved this thing uh, in a good direction. It's not as far as I would have liked it, but um, I'm not prepared to... Uh, in regard to, you know, our reputation and 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 the, and, the, and and what we have to see, I think, take into consideration, as far as exposing the town to needless uh, legal actions. Now, you, this is where I could be disabused of a, a view that I shouldn't have. But right now, uh, as I said, the legacy of my days on the planning board, we were uh, tutored to be reasonable in our uh, and our strenuousness of opinions held. Well, I think we've also tried to, um, you know, at the first, when the first application was submitted in March, many of the abutters' primary concern was that, you know, they knew that a building would probably go there, but that they had been told it would go on the southeast portion of the lot, and initially it was like, you know, right in the middle. And so, and we took that very much to heart, and now, and feel like, you know, we really responded to those concerns, and the building is much smaller and on the southeast corner yeah, of the lot. It's, 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 it's but massing is being progressively modified right. to... And it's moved and the berm has disappeared, so it, uh, less, really uh, um, fitting. feel like we've uh, tried to respond to all the concerns, except we didn't go as far as saying we don't think anything should go there, because, mm. yeah. I think um, that, I think, may I Yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. No, yeah. yes. Uh, I think that, um, you know, you've moved further and further to sort of, as I said at the beginning, to make it as least harmful to the area. You're trying as hard to fit the footprint, but um, as far as fitting in with the neighborhood, there are three architectural styles. I don't see any of them being this architectural style at all. Um, it's going to be kind of a new element. And as far as being, I don't know, architecturally, I think 
is going to be the, the, the least harmful of what you've come up with, but I don't think it, of course, is an asset. I would have liked to see, and, and I see that your needs are met. You, you have to compromise. The question is, is it going to be an asset to, to this thing, or, and is Amherst Media going to be able to raise the funds that you need with having enough people be enthusiastic that you put this thing here when they're maybe damn mad that this thing is not according to what they think is good for the town. That's a question that I have. Is that a question? So, no, well, that's really out of our, yeah, that, uh, no, we, yeah, we, no, we can't that's venture. That's not my yeah. thing, but I did no, want to say that. You. Yeah, we can't I venture into I did want to say that because I do believe you're really important and want to have you be strong and present. Thank you. Okay. So, Can I um, one last thought? Should we take one more? Because, yeah. yeah, and then we'll uh, close the public portion. Yes. Hold yes. yes. I'm still bothered by the front door. <laughs> it, it's aesthetically challenged to me. I think that something needs to be done to it to make it more beautiful. I think maybe there should be a portico there so that it looks like the main entrance to the building, that rather than sticking in, there should be maybe that little stick out a little bit, little portico and some columns. It needs to look more beautiful. More it's, it's a sort of aesthetically entrance. challenged. It, it doesn't say anything to me. This is a front door. Welcome. It's just that. It does break up a long wall, which was horrendous before. I mean, that they've come that far to make the, the facade that everybody sees on the street greatly improved. But I think it can be further improved by making the main entrance look like the main entrance, something a little bit more elegant. Thank you. Maybe match. Have to do it. <laughs> one How much money you got? Just a quick question. How high is the roof at its height? It's been the same height for a long time. Well, it's about 28 feet. 26. 26 feet. 26 feet at the height or is it the medium? At the very peak. High peak. The highest peak. At the high peak. Yeah. It's high not peak. higher than we're allowed up at 38 the buildings that surround it. Okay. So um, <laughs> thank you. I think we were going to. We'll close the public uh, hearing portion of the meeting. And so we would you like to ask that um, Amherst, we'd like to set a meeting this month, you know, I guess as, as soon as we can, that is reasonable when we are available and that Amherst Media could come back with kind of the full application in one, in one place. Oh, yes, Christine. Hi, I'm Christine Brester, Planning Director. I just wanted to suggest that you not close the public hearing because you may want to hear from the public or others when you receive your new information. Yes, oh, I, I, I just I, meant yeah. I just meant this portion this particular within this session. meeting. Yes, yes. No, we're not going to definitely we're not going to close it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. But, but thank you, Christine. Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, I guess it's okay. up to you know we can ask the applicants what's reasonable. Yeah. yeah. And do we have any? What is January 27? No, it doesn't matter for me. Oh. Oh. You mean individual concerns? No, no, no. Just in terms of any days you can't meet to. Oh. Oh. Uh, the 15th, middle. Yeah. The 27th is great. Well, what about the first the Monday in February? Yeah. 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 Yeah
So you also offered the first week of February? Is that what I heard about? Well, I, I would. Uh, I think January would be. I would. I would. Act, I would say. Do are we available on the week of, or Monday or the week of Monday, the twenty seventh? Is that of January? Of January. So it's three weeks from today. Sorry, what? Is it Monday the twentieth, perhaps? That's I think that's Martin Luther King. 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 Yeah. 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 Town is closed. The, week after the 27th? 27th. Okay. At 4 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure, does that work for everyone? I just want to make sure it works for the Yeah, does it work for, it does work for all of us. I don't think it's heavy here. We still have the 3rd of February. Okay. So, um, we're still... So, our date certain is Monday, January 27th at... 4 p.m. Sure. Okay. Assuming here. Yeah. Oh, you have to look into that. I was looking into that. Mm -hmm. so, to be, uh, yes. We kind of got used to this. Place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Does everyone like this room? <laughs> Yes. It's actually, it's actually, honestly, it's really hard to find a room. Yes, no, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's great. It's, 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 it works. Every first meeting would be down the street within the area for you. <laughs> it's always <laughs> overheated. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too noisy. Um, so, Nate, do you want my, or you got my notes? I think you've got all the notes, yeah. Um, I guess, I guess uh, you could um, circulate these to... This is a question. Can you circulate these to us as a commission so that we can uh, be prompted by that? And then if we were to get back to you, yep. all of us individually, yes, you get the list then we could add, time. and then yeah. you could aggregate any additional items and get them to build. I'm just thinking of yeah. trying to oh, yeah. uh, you know, be as effective and efficient as possible. Yeah, so I, I would, uh, yes. um, uh, yeah, OK. Okay, so with, uh, I don't, yeah, I think I need a motion to adjourn the meeting, although the meeting is kept so moved. open. No, I can't. No, I, I said I, so, so moved. moved. Second. No, 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 okay, you actually have to place the motion, I can't. I did, I oh, said did. so moved. So That's moved, okay, got it, got it, okay. Means of doing so. All in favor of closing, well, continuing Adjourning. the meeting to January 27th. Oh. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's, That's right. what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Continuing. Yeah. Continuing. Thank you. And then move to adjourn. Yeah. Yes, we move to adjourn. I think we did.